the School of um, Art and Design, what we're doing is we're um, skilling students uh, with specialised um, knowledge and um, skill in um, for professional careers in the visual arts, um, uh, design arts, design industries, and also art theory and art history and curatorship. So what the school does, it, it embraces this philosophy of interdisciplinary and flexible approach to art education. And we also introduce uh, new ideas into those programs as well. So we have uh, very strong research strengths in the area of uh, nature, culture, um, materiality and data, um, politics and protest, and also decolonization. So we've, we're very interested in also bringing in uh, an Indigenous First Nation perspective into the school program as well. So because we're um, a smallish school, we're not as big as, say, RMIT or places like that, you do, and we also really want people to be there in person. Obviously, COVID has made it difficult that we're all remote. Doesn't matter where we are, we're remote at the moment. But we're really interested in the one-on-one, -on -one, um, getting to know your colleagues, getting to know your network. And we really like to build up networks within that community as well, which is why uh, you, through our programs, you can plan the kinds of interests that you have. So if you have a specific specific interests, say, in um, European um, art of the early 18th century, you can follow courses on that. And what, um, what we do in all of the masters, so whether or not you're in uh, visual arts, design, or um, art history and curatorship, what we do is we give you a lot of training in research um, development. So we're really interested in independent research and um, we really try and instill those research skills in our students so that they can go on to either be um, independent practitioners, uh, curators, um, skilled workers in any area or um, practicing artists. So um, research, we're obviously the ANU is a research school. So we have a very strong bent on getting people to think, how do you how do you come up with a research question? How do you frame a research question? How do you develop that research through your, um, your interests and through your practice as well? So a lot of the master's courses are um, based around developing that independent research strength. So um, drawing on the scholarly strengths of the academic team is what we rely on to do that. We have um, leading uh, practitioners in art history and design and the visual arts in a comprehensive um, range of studios and courses. So we're one of um, maybe one of the remaining art schools that actually have a comprehensive um, workshop um, layout. Like we've still got um, object and jewellery design, we have printmaking, we have glass um, and, and textiles and photography, new media, all of those things. And we also um, bring in the idea of using new technologies into those courses as well. So we've got um, really flexible study programs. So uh, some of our um, master's students are doing actually double master's degrees in art history and in visual arts as well, or perhaps um, in archeology span and um, museum studies and uh, art history and curatorship. So the ANU is uh, one of those really um, uh, in inventive universities that have really thought about how people wanna choose their flexible learning degrees as well. So, um, one of the really intense strengths and quite exhausting to be an academic staff member is that you have to have a really uh, research focus um, practice and a high profile. So all of us are always constantly under the pump um, to have a really good and um, 
cutting edge research practice as well. And all of our students are encouraged to be part of our learning journey too. So it's a very inclusive school in that way that you get to know people. One of the things I loved about moving to Canberra was how non-hierarchical it was. I did a lot of my undergraduate and other postgraduate degrees in Sydney. And that's a very tough society to get into because one, you've got a larger population, but also um, it's got very old school systems and it, it depended on what school you went to and what school tie you're wearing. Whereas no one cares what school you went to in Canberra. It's really about how you engage and what you're interested in. And, um, you know, students and curators and directors of museums mingle together at openings. There's no kind of us and them attitude, really. It's quite good on that level. I really love it. And people are really friendly too. Like a lot of people say that when they come to Canberra, they go, I can't believe how friendly it is. Once you get over the shock of wondering where everyone is, <laughs> because it's a small <laughs> town, <laughs> everyone, once you start to develop your um, network, you realise how incredibly fun people are here too. So we really encourage interdisciplinary learning. We have lots of different exciting courses. Um, you know, once COVID's over, we've also got great... Um, traveling um, courses where you get to go to Europe or you um, go and meet um, indigenous groups, First Nation groups, um, and work on collaborative projects with different communities around um, Canberra, the Canberra region. We've also got um, a fantastic field work station on the coast that I sometimes do work at as well. So there's lots of opportunities to get to travel around as well. Um, and obviously through that, we have a huge recognition and commitment to the land, knowledge and cultures of the first Australian peoples. Um, and, and in that, we also have really strong and deep networks um, into the community. So we have um, practicing artists that live in our community, designers, curators, writers, and because of the close proximity to all the national cultural institutions, you know, we, we're also close to the policy makers as well. So it's not uncommon um, for some of our arts graduates to actually um, go into politics and end up working in policy as well. So the sky's your limit really. And the ANU is so great with that. It's got a whole lot of different sort of exchanges um, and things that you can do here too. Like this stuff I don't even know about that happens and you stumble across it and you go, oh my God, that's amazing. Like I've just fallen in with the Latin American um, society and I'm starting to learn all about um, Brazil and Cuba and all of these different places too because of course they're all part of the Asia Pacific region as well so um, it's really fantastic the people that you meet and and the groups of people that come through. So this is a, a really um, classic kind of group. This is a mixed group of um, students from all the different masters and we have different classes that are small. This is one class. This is a research training class and we're at the National Gallery of Australia and um, we're doing um, what's the course is called Points of View. And so you can see here they're all different ages, they're from different parts of the world and um, they might be painters or art uh, curators or sculptors or writers or performing artists. And, and we all tend to mix together in our different classes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I think we can see your screen. Your screen oh, is on the other it? side. Yes. Did you see it before? Uh, no, it's all the blank now. Oh, no. Yeah. It's happening for me too. It's just like the sliver of your screen and then yeah, like the it rest is. of it. Yeah. That's so annoying. You should have said something. <laughs> oh, yeah. That? That's good that enough. Hey, beautiful. No, that's so annoying. <laughs> oh, oh, that's well. why. <laughs> Here you go. See, this is, that was the one I was talking about with all the different things that you get to do. And this is the group of ragtag postgraduates that I had to keep in control at the National Gallery. And um, this is a really, I, I really love this image because this group of people here that you have standing in here, we had this um, fantastic information day. And this was one of those great posts that I got off Instagram where we um, tagged people. And you can see all of these people come from all of the organisations 
that surround um, the uh, School of Art and Design. So we've got Tagrenong Arts, Canberra Potters, Strathairn Arts Gallery, um, the Glassworks, Tribute Projects. And this is just a small, um, each one of these people represents uh, one of the museums or, um, or small organisations, arts organisations that surround the art school. So there's lots of um, opportunity for uh, mixing in with people, getting um, employment um, opportunities, uh, working on shows, having exhibitions, curating exhibitions, writing catalogue essays. Uh, there's lots of things that you can get to do. So, you mean, we're going to have lots of field trips, right? Yeah, we do normally. Yeah, um, you, we, there's lots of exhibition openings all the time and um, we do field trips and uh, we get to meet people. Um, that come into the school as well. So we often have a lot of international um, artists who come to the school and scholars. So that's one of the nice things about the school is that we have quite a few visitors normally in normal times. Obviously this is very unusual, but, um, and um, yeah, there's lots of activities always happening and master's students are always up to something. They're always curating something or, um, you know, putting on, a show in a particular way or or we we often meet as a group at openings and see each other and do stuff like that too so um what the school just to give you an understanding is we have undergraduate programs so um what you have is um the single degrees and the double flexible degrees so a lot of our students that come to the art school might be in say a range of different degrees as well as the visual arts degree and they typically do three years of their degree and then go into honours so um, often if they don't do honours they can come back and then do the masters so some of our graduates are actually uh, in the masters program are actually people who've done these degrees as well or maybe they did um, an art history and curatorial degree and then decided to do a master's in visual arts or design too. So there's also that aspect to it as well. So there's a real mix of people. So it's, you get um, a real range of people who've come in from different, um, different backgrounds to do the degrees. It's not just one straight pathway where you get uh, young undergraduates moving into a master's degree. You, it, you really get to meet a whole range of people who come in. Um, typically with a master's degree, um, what we would uh, want people to do is really think about how they, um, how they build on their practice and their research skills and make sure that it supports what they want to do. So whether or not it's to go on to do a PhD later on, or it's to have their own practice or their independent um, working life or working in institutions. So um, within these um, master's degrees, we, we try and help people plan their programs so they really get the most out of them as well. Um, and because we're a small school, it's usually quite successful in that way. As long as people stay in touch with me and don't disappear for the two years of their degree and I only meet them at the end. There are some people like that. They sort of disappear and then they come back going, why didn't I do this? So it's really good to keep in touch with all of your lecturers and also your conveners and kind of think, you know, what, how can I get the best out of it? What's the best way to go with this? So I love using this um, fantastic image of Yang Yang. Um, she sadly graduated last year, so I don't get to see her much anymore, but she actually did a master's of art history and curatorial studies and then decided to come back and do a master's of visual art. And because she became very passionate about the idea of making as well. So you can see, um, we, we actually have the most amazing, one of my colleagues, Christina Clark, she did a PhD in uh, gold and silver. And then because she really started to think about her curatorial and art history practice, she went back after her PhD and did a Master of Art History and Curatorial Studies. And now she's working as an academic um, with the team. So you can see that the, the master's programs aren't kind of this interim thing that you do, you know, just between degrees. They, they are also pathway degrees as well. And um, we have a lot of opportunities through those degrees to think about 
um, which direction that you'd like to go and how you want to do it. Are there any questions at this point? You happy? Uh, sorry, I've got a quick question for that. So uh, could you please introduce uh, the uh, proportion of international people? Is it to, uh, I mean, is, uh, you know, from this major is probably uh, many people from all over the world. So uh, can you give, please give us just a hint to, to that? Yeah, I, that's a really good question, actually. I'm not quite sure what the complete breakdown is, but the art school uh, doesn't have a huge amount of international students. Um, I think it's about a third, a third of our intake, maybe. Um, you know, it's not a big school, so it's not like um, RMIT that might have, say, 50%. Uh, and I mean, this is one of the things that's come up too with this whole travel thing is that the ANU, um, because we're not completely reliant on overseas students' money, you know, we're not as, um, we're not as crippled as other universities are too. <laughs> because we're a research, um, a research university um, we're not relying on a huge amount of international students to come to the school but what we do have is a really good mix of international students so in the master's program i've got um, students from um, latin america uh, i've got a student from texas um, students from um, france and italy um, and then also, um, when you think about it, it's, it's not just Chinese students either. I've got Indonesian students, Malaysian students, Thai students and Indian students. So within that international uh, student body, uh, there's a real mix as well. Like um, when I uh, took one of my classes, we actually discovered that uh, there was um, everyone spoke a different language and we had and it was a class of 20 and it was just fantastic because we were, we were writing titles of artwork in everyone's different language as well so there was that really lovely mix and then also because australia is so big it's not not everyone is from a local area either so we have students from tasmania and darwin you know because they're they're, you know, they're a long way away i grew up in darwin so I came south for um, my education many years ago now, mind you. But um, uh, that's the other thing that's quite good about being in Canberra is it's um, sort of close proximity to Melbourne and Sydney. So it's, you know, it's a drive, a, you know, a morning's drive to Sydney and you can get to see some of the major shows in Sydney and, and, um, and then or drive to the coast, you know, and be in rural New South Wales in five minutes, you know. So <laughs> you've got you've got kind of the best of both worlds in a way. Like it's kind of metropolitan, but at the same time, it's yeah, it is. It's so yeah. much politic. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Canberra's got when it's not burning down, it's got really lovely clean air. <laughs> <laughs> so just the middle of uh, behind Sydney and Melbourne, right? So uh, I think maybe only two, three hours to Sydney. Yeah. It's three, well, depending on the traffic into Sydney, it's three and a half. <laughs> All right. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun drive to Melbourne too. And then it's, you know, a train ride to Melbourne and a flight to Adelaide. When I was younger and a younger undergraduate, we used to drive to Adelaide to go and visit our Adelaide friends. So, wow. yeah, you get you pretty get cool. <laughs> <laughs> when you get older, you don't really want to drive as far as that anymore. All oh, right. <laughs> You can't you can't stand up afterwards, but yeah, it's it's got that really lovely sense to it that it's not we're not isolated, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, and it is you know the other thing too you have to remember because it's a capital city, we have all of the um, diplomatic people stationed here. So there's lots of um, you know there's a it, there's a real cultural mix in Canberra too, and that's what I love about it as well. It's like the League of Nations, really. So you've got so many people here. It's great. I love it. Um, now, I do have something to admit, though, which is really going to be difficult to explain. But we've actually, 
we're disestablishing the master of visual art and the master of design. And what we're doing is we're actually making, well, I've written this amazing new um, master's degree that combines all of it because the master of visual art and design uh, developed out of two different areas. But because students are so incredibly interdisciplinary, we've actually um, just waiting for the approval, but it's about to go to head. We're going to do um, a brand new course and it's called the Master of Contemporary Practices in Art and Design. And the only thing that really changes really is um, the name of the masters because you get to do all the courses, the similar courses as well, but actually you get to do more because we're combining the two degrees together. So there's actually more interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary practice too. So for those of you who are here tonight who are interested in doing the visual art and the design arts, you can apply for these now and then you'll just get a letter to say um, we're, we're changing the parameters of the uh, degree as well. So we should hear um, because of COVID, it's been delayed a little bit, but um, next year we'll be starting with a brand new degree. But uh, these degrees will still run out while there's still students in them, but we just won't be offering them anymore in that way. But the Master of Art History and Curatorial Studies is still as it stands. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting about the new Masters because um, it's, it's just going to be a uh, a really nice simple way of understanding what master's research is within contemporary practice today so i think um visual arts probably becoming a little bit outdated in that way we don't really talk about visual artists anymore we talk about practitioners and um creative designers and and um and we we frame it in a different way so there are a lot of career and professional outcomes. Um, a lot of people are really worried that uh, they, they are doing these courses and that they're worried that it's not going to be work um, afterwards. And that's one of the reasons why we really try and get people to be involved in person to meet as many people and build up those networks. Um, we usually find the people who get left behind are the ones that don't come to classes and don't involve themselves in the community because really getting a job is about six degrees of separation it's about really who you meet and who you know and um, putting your best foot forward and that's how um, artistic networks work they it's who you know and who's um, recommending you to someone obviously it's always going to be tough and there are it's a tough world out there but one of the things that these degrees teach you is how to take an opportunity and recognize an opportunity when you see it and also how to be independent in inventing your own opportunities as well so really encouraging you to think outside of the square too um, as we know um, many degrees that people are doing at the moment um, there is no job certainty at the end of them and as things become more uh, roboticized or digitized there's a, a shift in the way that people are working in society. But one of the things that we find is that our graduates are really um, robust. You know, they have a really good uh, ability to be resilient against change and, and thinking about how to work with change and, and how to find those opportunities as well. So um, I, um, I recommend uh, these courses to anyone because um, you never know where it might lead you and, and what you might end up doing um, in a changing world. So the Master of Design, which will become part of the Master of um, Contemporary Practices and Art and Design, we have this really amazing design team. Um, one of the things is our visual artists actually want to be part of that as well and, and vice versa. So um, that's the reason why we put these two degrees together is because not only do we have these amazing studios, some of our design students are actually using those studios to make work in a real world situation as well. They're not just doing computational design. So um, we don't sort of define uh, one side as design and one side as visual art. We actually really think about design and art in a broader sense because a lot of our visual artists are actually really embedded in our maker space where you get to use laser cutters and 
um, 3D printing machines and they're interested in photogramming and, and creating virtual environments where some of our design students are actually furniture designers and actually thinking about how to apply computational design into um, furniture design. And as uh, Dan, you're interested in glass, you know, we actually have a lot of um, uh, bespoke um, artists in Canberra, as you might know, the Jam Factory and Canberra have a really good relationship, even though I think Canberra is much more a centre of the world, okay? Just, I don't think Jam Factory is centre of the world as Canberra is. <laughs> oh, no, definitely, that's fair. <laughs> No, I love the jam factory. Lots of my friends work there. Um, so a lot of glasses of my friends. Um, so they, um, we have um, glass artists who work in the community and have their own businesses. And, um, you know, like the glass works here, they make all of the trophies for Australian of the Year, for example. So there's lots of different sorts of commissioning um, opportunities that come through the school as well, because we are, um, part of that broader community so um, you, you you get to sort of work in in different ways and, and work under those things and and if you are thinking as a glass artist to uh, do uh, more sort of uh, production line work you know um, we're really interested in connecting you to uh, the creative industries and things like that too so it's not you don't just have to be an artist you can also be um, production line as well mm, beautiful and I think so my does the university have really strong connections to the Canberra Glassworks then? Absolutely. The Canberra Glassworks has really come out of the ANU School of Art. Um, obviously, uh, it's one of our stronger um, uh, cultural institutions in Canberra. At the moment, uh, what they are doing... Um, have you ever visited the Glassworks? Uh, no, I haven't. Not yet. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's so fantastic because it's in um, the old power station at Kingston Foreshore. And um, what the ACT government is doing at the moment is they're building a whole new um, cultural precinct. And so all of the um, organisations, the arts organisations that uh, work in Canberra are actually going to move around the glassworks as well. So oh, there's going to be this really massive um, um, cultural precinct that's going to be built over the next couple of years. So uh, there's going to be lots of opportunities there for people to work in different organisations and institutions, um, you know, small and large organisations around that area as well. And there's often quite a bit of work coming up in the glassworks as well. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, so, and I'm, I'm very involved with Megalo, which is a printmaking organisation, which is next door. So um, I've had quite a bit to do with the building works there. So. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I want to ask a question that I already got the offer of visual arts semester two, and I want to defer my offer because uh, I cannot go back to Canberra this year. So I really uh, curious about the new degree you were talked before, like this kind of the combination be between the visual arts and the de design art. So I do not know if it's possible for me to change my offer or how to reapply yes. this. No, no, you'll be offered. Um, you'll actually be given the opportunity to change into that new degree if you want to. Yeah. Uh, so if for okay. some reason um, you don't want to, that's totally fine as well, because you'll still be treated um, just as importantly as a master's of visual arts students. We're not going to be ignoring, um, okay. you know, any any student. But yeah, it's really, we'll be encouraging people to move into the new degree because um, that way we can service one degree rather than a whole lot of them. But, you know, it, yeah. it won't make any difference really. It, it just depends on what you want on your transcript. So I know there's a few students who are doing the Master of Design and they prefer to keep the Master of Design. They don't want to move to the new one if when it comes around. So um, it's just that those courses won't be offered after um, this semester, I don't think. But yeah, you'll be given you'll be given that opportunity and a letter will be sent out to you. It's just that it hasn't gone through the um, processes of the university yet. Um, yeah, so when 
And do you know when is the exact date for me to to change the offer if I want to? They'll let you know. Yeah, there won't be any <laughs> okay. rush, and you won't be rushed into it, and you won't miss out on your position because of it. Because I really want to get enrolled in the uh, semester one next year, so yeah. I do not know. No, don't don't worry. You won't you won't miss out. You're already in the program, so that's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So don't don't stress about that. Um, yeah, thank you. So I got a sorry. I got a quick question. So yeah, if we fine. insist to join the sem, uh, semester one, which is uh, maybe next semester, so we're still doing remote learning or. Are there any further I hope not. I hope next semester in semester two will be remote learning. I definitely mm -hmm. know next semester will be, and that's just to be um, equal uh, with so people like you who can't return to Canberra, mm -hmm. we don't want them to be um, set back because they can't return. So we're going to offer remote teaching throughout next semester because we've got lots of domestic students who can't come back to Canberra either. They just don't have the accommodation just because they had to leave their student flats and, you know, can't come back easily. But yes, let's cross fingers. Let's, let's cross fingers, I say. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon we're all going to have to have a party. When we can finally see each other, we're all just going to have to... <laughs> I've got students stuck in China. I, I talked to them. One of my students was in Wuhan and I didn't, she was stuck inside for I don't know how long. It was just so terrible. I was really worried about her, but, um, you know, and my American student is really worried about her family back in America too. And yeah, yeah it's, it's really tough. It's yes. tough time. Uh, actually, China's getting better, better now. So, yeah, don't be too yeah. Worry. yeah. So hopefully we'll be yeah a couple of months behind you guys and we'll all be sorted as soon as it... exactly. Yeah, that's right. I know it's really tough, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. God, I really don't want to be teaching remote any longer than this. <laughs> yeah. Although I have to say, I've learned a few things from teaching remotely. I've learned a few tricks, so you know. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I, re I really hope that we're going to do it. Now, I'm just going to change screens here because what I'm going to do is, I don't know whether or not, um, can you see this page here? Yeah. Okay, so in programs and courses, and you've probably done this already, you can look up your, um, your Sorry. program that you Erica, want to do. Still, sorry, Erica, it's still your slides. Have you oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe you should stop sharing and resharing. I will. I'll again. go back in. I'll go back yeah. in. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. All right. Can you see the Master of Art History? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. So when when you go in here, it gives you a, a rundown of what it is. And then it has admissions and fees and then the study. And you've probably looked at this and thought, oh, my God, what are all these courses? And it's the same with the Master of Visual Arts and Design as well. They have all of these courses. So this is what my job is, is to help you navigate all of these uh, courses and how you do them in your program. So what we have in the normal um, degree, in all of the degrees, is 96 units. Now, some of you, if you've just come straight from an undergraduate degree or you, um, you've you done an honours or something like that, you can actually apply for credit. You don't have to do the full 96 units as long as you can prove that you've actually done that learning, those learning outcomes. So what you have is normally when you apply for credit, it will be taken out of the introductory courses, depending on the level that you've done. So there's also, if you look in visual arts here, there's also introductory components in art theory as well. So um, Danielle, you're in, uh, you're doing a degree in visual arts now, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. So you you might choose to get a credit in your foundation theory courses. 
Or you might go, actually, there are art theory courses here that I really want to do that I haven't thought about before that actually interest me. Or you go, no, I'm going to take credit for these courses and I'm going to do the art theory courses if I want to in my, what you have is 24 units of, um, what are they called? Electives. So typically, all of these courses are broken up into six unit courses, okay? Some courses are 12 unit, you have to check. So how they do it is, it, it breaks down into 24 units of introductory courses, 24 units of disciplinary courses, 24 units of research training courses, which are the 8,000 level courses, and 24 units of electives. And so that's how the degrees are planned out in terms of what your requirements are for each course. Now you can leave your electives to last because you don't have to do your electives straight away. And you can use that 24 units of electives to think about applying for an advanced master's where you do a 24 units thesis instead. And the thesis in visual arts is actually a practice led component. And the thesis in the art history and um, curatorial studies is a 20,000 word um, exegetical, uh, uh, 20,000 word thesis. So the visual arts and design is exegetical. So it's through practice led research. And the masters is through a written component, 20,000 words. It is um, reliant on having a supervisor and a good GPA, a general uh, point score average of um, high credit to distinction throughout your degree. But there is that option to do an honours equivalent um, thesis at the end of it. Uh, international students, unfortunately, have to do it all full time. So it means that you write 20,000 words in one semester. But if you're a domestic student, you have the luxury of being able to choose to do it part time. It does take longer, but it means that you could stretch your um, thesis component out over one year if you wanted to for that reason. So when they talk about the master's advance, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about some, you know, uh, majorly different course uh, that you do. It just has a, a thesis component in it that you don't do in the ordinary masters. But because we've set up um, these masters for research training, if you don't want to do the thesis, we do have fantastic courses where you do equivalents of research training anyway. So you don't have to feel like you're pressured into doing that master's advanced unless you want to write a 20,000 word thesis. You don't have to do it. It's not it's not um, something that's going to make you look even better on paper, but 20,000 word thesis might be something that you want to do because you're thinking, actually, I'd like to go and try out for a PhD later on and I want to show that I can write 20,000 words in English or um, about, a, you know, an independent practice led research. So it, you know, don't feel like you have to um, curtail your master's degree just to do that. I've had lots of students who've come to our courses thinking that they want to do the master's advanced and then they discover, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to do the curatorial internships. I want to do the um, collaborative projects. I want to learn French. I want to do mathematics. I want to do you know, that you actually can do is um, use those electives to do any course outside of um, the art school. So it's really, it's really about what you want to do and how you want to support your learning and what you're interested in. So you don't have to feel like you're being forced into doing something you don't want to do. Um, so there's also... Um, uh, let's have a look at the Master of Design here. So with, the, with it in mind that um, these courses uh, will all be in the same list together, you can see here that even in the design, you can do uh, sculpture, introduction to conceptual practices and construction. So for example, uh, Danielle, you might decide actually 
I know I've done an art theory course, but I wouldn't mind doing a 6,000 level uh, conceptual sculptural practice course as well to enhance my glass practice, you know, because you don't have to just do um, studio glass. You could actually think about how to um, think about your practice within a, a conceptual sculptural um, framework as well. So um, a lot of glass artists do that at the art school as well. So I'm on uh, quite a few PhD panels for glass artists. So I know that um, as they develop through their practice, they actually think about um, moving it into a different sphere as well. So they might end up doing it through printmaking and drawing like um, Mel Douglas did. You know, she thought about... Um, how to bring drawing into glass and how to collaborate with um, printmakers in her glass works as well. 